Hello, my friends. Today we will talk about the fundamental principles of construction of logistic system. Before describing the principles of the construction and functioning of logistic system, we will define the term system, including its elements uh, that will be considered. In the end, we will link the principles of the functioning of a logistic system and the tools for managing this system. So, a goal is primary. The goal is the direction, direction of movement of the elements inside the system. We can say that the goal determines everything. The starting point, the end point, the direction, the elements of a flow, and the resources inside the logistic system. We will, not, we will not consider what the goal is, because this information can be easily found both in the electronic and paper source, or, or in your own personal experience. This information is not important at the moment. What is important is that we have already mentioned several important elements of the system. And this information allows us to proceed to the next step in determining the elements of the system. If we have the starting point, the end point and the direction, we mean that some elements move from the starting point to the end point, and the motion itself determines the speed of the inside the system per unit time. And here we define an element of the system as a flow, the flow of elements inside the system that move from the starting point to the end point at some speed. For logistic system, this flow is a fry flow. Any flow of elements inside the, log the logistic system is characterized by volume weight characteristics, quantities, direction, speed, time, as well as losses and costs, when the flow moves through space. For instance, let's imagine a distribution center for processing goods with standard operation for unloading, receiving, receiving, moving, sorting out, storing, picking, controlling, and shipment. The starting point is a receiving dock. The end point is a shipping dock. Elements of the flow and various goods of daily demand, which should be received from suppliers, stored, picked, and shipped to the store. Each unit of goods is in order with a measurement of volume and weight characteristics is combined together in the freight flow at different points of space and time scales. Each unit of the goods has its volume in the form of its monetary volume, as well as the processing of such freight, freight flows at a certain level of losses. So, the flow is formed. The next logical conclusion tells us about two important things. Firstly, the flow of goods moves in a limited space. We call this space a channel. Secondly, the elements of the freight flow cannot move in the channel by themselves. For this, the resources that drive the flow are used. For example, some personnel are used to unload the goods from the truck. This is a human resource. For moving the goods inside of the distribution center, we need various mechanisms and equipment. Even the warehouse itself, this is as also a resource. We can accurately determine the next. The flow of elements moves inside a certain environment in the channel. The channel consists of resources which two functions, limiting and driving. However, some resources may be as the, the elements of the flow. For instance, trucks that are moving along the highway and moving all the goods from warehouse to the store by the truck. In first option, the highway is a channel and the truck is a flow, and in the second option the same truck is a channel for the goods. Also, each channel can combine several flows. For example, a forklift inside a distribution center is managed by a professional IT system like WMS. Accordingly, in parallel with the physical flow, there is an information flow. We can consider the movement of goods inside the warehouse and the information inside an IT system as two different flows with a channel in which these flows move, and uh, this will be correct. But do not forget that these two flows are combined in one supply chain, which gives us the right to talk about combining the two flows in one channel. I would like to note th that uh, the channel has resources that consume cost in time. 
regardless of the amount of processing the fry flow. A good example is the hourly wage of staff, which is tied to his time at work, but not to the volume of the processed fried. The other example is the lighting of the warehouse, which can work when the fried flow is out. In both cases, we have the operation costs, but not the, but not the, the fact that these resources provide the conditions for movement of the price flow at the current time. If you have an effective resource management, that for us necessary to lead the freight flow and the cost of processing such this flow. Active resources, taken with the throughput, in our case, price rate pay allows us to pay stuff only for the work actually done, and the installation of motion sensors, various uh, timers, will allow lighting in the warehouse at the time when necessary. A good indicator which speaks about the control out cost in dynamics is the aggregated indicator of the relationship of the operation cost on amount of the freight flow for a period. Thus, the efficiency of the resources is controlled. I will say that the operation cost for maintaining for resources are divided into fixed and variable. The fixed cost, there are the costs that will arise regardless of the amount of flow passing through the channel. Accordingly, the variable's cost will arise only at the time of the passage of the freight flow. Therefore, it is important to increase the share of the resource with variable cost for more efficiently use of the raw resources in the channel and money of investors or shareholders. On the one hand, the higher the resource load, the higher its utilization efficiently, efficiently. But on the other hand, the restriction of true part can become a narrow area and cannot ensure the passage of all necessary of the freight flow. Resources in the channel usually is more constant than the flow. At different points in, in space and time scales, the freight flow can have significant variability. For example, for a long period of time, the flow has seasonal, for short period in the frame of the day, the flow has significant variability too. If to sum everything to the above, we can say that the system is a targeted activity of the elements of the flow in the channel, environment of resources, according to, according to the established rules, where each element of the flow from the starting point to the end point, just in time, with the maximum level of fulfillment of clients requirements and with the minimal losses and with the optimal effective cost for maintaining resource in the channel. Any logistic system is built on a foundation consist consisting of uh, two main parts. The first is the principle of construction of the system. The second is the managing, management tools of the elements of the system. Today we will talk about the first part. In the first part there are 15 basic 15 basic principles for constructing the optimal system, which in turn fall into three categories. The first, there are the general principles that apply to both the flow and the channel. The second, there are principles related only to the flow. And the third category includes principles related to construction a channel. So, the 15 basic principles of construction the optimal system were defined. The principle of balance, the principle of control, the principle of identification, the principle of originality, the principle of unity or uni unity of purpose, the pr principle of order, the principle of development, the principle of one-way flow, the principle of short distance, the principle of sy synchronism, the principle of minimal action, principle of even evenly flow, the principle of timeliness, the principle of reserve, the principle of utilization. Each principle is unique, but is very closely related to other principles. So, the first principle is the principle of balance. It tells us that the direction of flow, timeliness of flow, level of fulfillment of the client's requirements, as well as the losses of elements of the flow in the channel, should be balanced with the cost of maintaining the resources in the channel. If we have not the other priority, we should achieve the, the set goals 
the delivery of elements of the flow to a specific, specific point at a specific time with the minimum possible for perform this task optimal costs. We should clearly understand the critical change as a parameter of time service of loss level will direct affect uh, the change in the cost of performing tasks. If we can deliver freight in a wide range of time, then we open the various possibilities. Decline of the cost if you want to the minimize the losses during handling and delivering the goods. This can usually cost more. If you can fulfill order below 100% of service level and we don't lose the customer satisfaction and at the, at the same time the cost level is reduced so that we found a balance between the goals of flow and cost. Not always we can talk about reducing a service indicator below 100% level. For instance, for instance, in postal logistics we cannot we cannot announcement the declared delivery time and perform mail delivery not 100%. In this business, which has a high level of customer orientations, it is important to deliver our goods on time without losses. For ex execution, this task we should provide of the channels with need resources, but at the same time to control the targeted level of costs. This will achieve a balance. But there is not limit. We in any business want to fulfill the our task accurately without losses with the maximum level of service and at minimum cost. And any decisions related to reducing cost can lead to a decline in a service performance and as a consequence to gap our relationship with clients and to lost our profit both in the short and long terms. A good example to reduce the level of wages to a minimum market level for warehouse workers when we want to reduce the operation cost of the company, which can lead to an outflow and further shortage of personnel involved in freight handling. A significant re reduction of the cost can, le can lead to a decline of service indicators, or two high service indicators can lead to unnecessarily overstated, unnecessary of cost. The task of management is to find when the levels of service indicators and cost will be balanced between themselves and contribute to perform of the main tasks. The second principle is the principle of control. It is declared as all important elements of the system should have a measured control at the necessary point in a space and time. The lack of control leads to additional costs. The cost of control should not be higher than the losses from its absence, and unless otherwise specified. The principle belongs to the first category, to the elements both the flow and the channel. To understand how our system achieves the specific uh, parameters of the task, including target service indicators and cost indicators. We should have a constant access to each element of the system at all important points in space and time. Control at early stage and next stage of the task execution can tell us about a problem that can be happen. It is important to understand that control over of control is not permissible. The cost of control should be paid back at the expense of reduce of losses of elements of flow and more efficiently, efficiently use of resources in the channel. The, con the control is achieved, is achieved by the system of, op of operational reports and indicators. We can use the control when it is, it is possible to identify a necessary element of the system, and this is evidenced by the third principle of construction of the optimal system, the principle of identification. The princip the, this principle told us elements of the system should have a way of free and simple identification. Currently, we are facing a global increase of information technology. When managing the supply chain, uh, we implement many different systems, such as ERP, WMS, TMS, YARD, WEB, GPS, 
and others, this help us control other elements of all the in the channel. At the same time, all systems have the ability to identify a specific, a specific element along the supply chain, transferring it from one system to another, enabling us to track its passage in the channel and specific control points. Only in this way do we understand whether hazardous element contribute, contributes to the achievement, achievement of the global goal, evaluate the risk of failure at each stage. In this case, every element that includes into the system should not only be accessible all the time and uh, at uh, every point of space, but also have its own unique identifier. Each element in the system should be unique and have its own personal identifier, if this is necessary. This is evidenced by the fourth principle. Availability of control system does not allow us to identify each element of the system. Only the uniqueness of each element allows us to correctly identify and control each element in the system. If inside a warehouse you operate two cells locate, in different parts of a, of a warehouse with the same identifier, this will lead to chaos, which lead to additional financial and physical losses of rights. If two different consignments are assigned the same identifier, this will lead to chaos. If you receive two orders in WMI system from different customers with uh, the same identifier, you will get chaos. It is with the purpose of uh, observing the principle of uniqueness that in many systems there is a check on the, on the uniqueness of the elements. The, the system checks that the ID numbers of each unit remain unique and do not repeat. This is the only way to achieve full control over elements of system. At this point, we understand that the system includes of various elements elements of the flow and resources. However, what will happen if these uh, elements will function only based on their local goals? In the optimal system, each element should not be considered separately, but as part of the general system, aimed at achieving the main goal. Local goal, goals that are not synchronized with the main goals of the system lead to additional losses. The fifth principle tells us about the need for the unity of the goals of all elements of the one system. This is a productive way. In large companies, conflicts often, often arise between different divisions that control over the freight flow, but with an emphasis on the perform, perform of local goals. For example, a commercial department or a purchase, purchasing department is always want is in having enough goods for sale. The same applies to the directors of the stores of the trading network of a retailer, whose financial motivation is aimed at performing the sales plan and making profit from the trade. On, other, on the other hand, there are a logistic structure, such as warehouses and uh, a department for a managing stock, which are limited by resources for storing the stock of goods. This restriction this restriction can act the physical space of the warehouse and also the established norms for the storage of goods inside warehouses and stores. At the same time, the financial motivation of these employees can be directed absolutely in the opposite direction from maintaining the normative commodity stocks. In this situation, we have a conflict between one group of employees which are interested in the largest insurance stock of goods and the second group of employees who manage the stock in accordan accordance with established norms of face the limitation of the resource for its storage. One of the methods for resolving such conflict is the establishment of a correct system of motivation for this group of employees. As an example, we can mention a balanced motivational system of warehouse employees. On the one hand, the warehouse division should ensure timely processing of goods in the warehouse, including shipment. On the other hand, they 
should act with the cost no more than the budget cost. Of include the two indicators in motivational motivation these employees, it will enable to balance the performance of the local task with the main purpose of the company, making profit and managing its cost in this division. Moreover, I will say that the communication between key representatives of opposite departments of company is a prerequisite for such synchronous work. A good example of using a local goal that uh, led in the opposite direction from the main goal of the company's work uh, is an example of the use of robotics in the manufacture in the book Elia Goldratt's The Goal. Continuous work of robotics for the sake of fulfilling, full fulfilling a local indicator led to an increase in unnecessary stocks, which led to additional cost for their storage and overstocking with unnecessary finished products. There are many examples in everyday life. People who have a key positions in companies should not to forget about the main goal of the company's work and do not make decisions that lead to the perform of local goals but don't perform of the main goal. This is the way to degradation of companies. It is important to set up the work of the company, the different division to perform local tasks fully, but don't forget about achieving a global goal of the company. Correctly establish its motivation. Correctly expose its performance uh, indicator for control. Communication between departments and the introduction of other methods for achieving a balance between local and main goals is a key task of top management. The sixth principle is the principle of the order. In the optimal system, the technological and physical order should be maintained. If there is uh, no order in the system, the system has limitations, which leads to additional costs. The cost of maintaining order should not be higher than the possible losses from its uh, absence. The order, this is the movement of the flow or work of the resources in the system according to the specified rules. We have in the system two orders, technological orders, technological and physical order. The technological order is regulated by the administrative documentation and the rules of the personal work in the system. Complain the action of personal, of personal in accordance with uh, established rules. This is uh, the provision of technological order. For example, if an, uh, a rules of use received, has been created for the distribution center. The personnel involved in this section are required to perform it and don't deviate from the described uh, actions. Technological regulation also specifies the location of various technological zones, cells, and places of storage. The physical order and uh, clean lines uh, should also be maintained in the warehouse according, according to the established schedule. This action allow not to waste time uh, on uh, unproductive operations. For example, when picking goods from the cells in the warehouse, garbage appears uh, in the form of pen, cardboard and packing film. If you do not remove this garbage in time, it clutters the assets, which significantly complicates, complicates the movement of warehouse equipment and personnel which leads to a decrease in labor productivity and uh, not efficiently use of e equipment inside the uh, warehouse. The search for inventory equipment as a means of production, when they are not in their set areas, also leads to time wastage for this search. The availability of dirt and dust in the premises and uh, in the workplace leads to various negative consequences, from staff layoffs to failure of electronic equipment. When we talk about efficiency, then the seventh uh, principle opens us another way to achieve it. The system should be continuously improved in efficiency. If the system does not develop, it has limitation or will uh, face them in the future. The investment spent on the improvement of the system should be returned in a timely manner at the expense of the effect obtained it, uh, unless otherwise specific. The whole world is uh, developing continuously. Te technological progress in our time gives us the wide uh, opportunities for choosing the ways 
of development, choosing the most um, effective models for the implementation of our activities. Yes, for the introduction of new technological solutions, investments are needed, sometimes uh, significant. The proposed new solution allow us uh, to ensure a return of the investments involved at the expense uh, of the effect obtained after their implementation. Most importantly, the new technologies allow us not only to reduce the cost of production, they provide us with a new level of control, improving the quality of our services, expanding our levels of communication, bringing us to new markets, providing our companies with new suppliers and customers. The logistic system that does not introduce new decisions does not seek new ways to increase its efficiency, like an etcher pull, will pull down the whole company. In the modern world, the logistics plays, plays a decisive role. The client nowadays wants to satisfy his needs in the shortest time with the highest level of quality and uh, at the minimum cost. The client became uh, very exacting. The company solves the logistic task first of all provides the requirements of its final consumers. The development of the logistic system this is not a passion. It is a requirement of the situation that the client dictates. If you do not develop, you do not perform the condition of the final consumer. That we begin to lose. First customers, then businesses. Advanced companies in many cases create new opportunities. Being the final, being the, being the real flagships of business. They see the needs of the market and free resources in the world, creating completely new opportunities for development. For instance, in the company Uber, and similar to it, uh, which use no technological, techno technological solutions, create new links between free resources and consumers, driving out uh, the usual solution from the market. The existing logistic system should develop with only one purpose, to stay in the zone of satisfaction the growing needs of the clients. Only in this way it is possible to build a business in the long term. We are finishing the first category and starting the second, which includes the principles related to construction of the flow. The eight principle tells us about one-way flow organization. In an optimal system, the flow movement is uh, organized one way. If the flow has a return of the road, the system has limitations. In continuum, Continuation, we can add that if the flow has a turn along the road, this usually leads to additional costs. The ninth principle of the organization of the flow stands near to the next principle. This is the principle of the short road, or as uh, it is often called, the principle of short shoulder. The optimal flow in the system is organized along a short road. If the flow deviates uh, from a short road, the system has limitations. A movement over a short way is minimized distance and shortens, shortens uh, the travel time. But uh, in life, it is not always possible to organize a movement along the straight, shortest way. Even modern aircraft do not fly at the shortest way. Various factors interfer interfere with the design of the flight plan, including close geographic zones. Of flights or simply a safety factor with the develop deployment of uh, airfields uh, for emer emergency landing. However, when we take uh, all the limit limitative factors, this road can be most optimal and effective. The main task of the specialist who developing the logistic system makes the movement of the flow by on the short shoulder. Find all the limit all, all the limitations and work with it. This principle also work, uh, works uh, with multimodal transportation. Then we use different types of uh, transport when planning the logistic system. Multimodality allows us to deliver the goods in the necessary time for us at the lowest possible cost. If we have several flows in the channel, then we should take uh, the tenth principle, the principle of synchronization. Some different flows in the same system should be synchronized with each other at important points on the time scales. If in time there is a gap between uh, such flows at uh, important points, 
of time scales, the system has, system has a limitation. For instance, many people in logistics know that fried uh, information and documentary flows should be synchronized among themselves. Order received, received uh, at the beginning of the picking will not be put into operation until the picking zone is provided the goods. The truck uh, will not leave the warehouse until the documents is prepared. The goods in the store cannot be accepted until the electronic consignment not sent from WMS system or ERP system of the warehouse is accepted uh, in the ERP system of the store. All these uh, flows uh, should be synchronized among themselves uh, at certain important points. The task of management to ensure the re reliability of the operation of channels resources in order to ensure to the synchroniza synchronization of flows which in turn will cause work without failure. In the optimal system, the number of actions with a flow is minimal. If there are additional actions in the system with a flow, the system has a limitation. This interpretation belongs to the elements principle, called the principle of minimal actions. The main task of management in the development of the logistic system to ensure a minimum of action with the flow in the channel. If you use a minimum of resources in the channel when handling elements of the flow, then we will not generate additional cost in our system. Every day we need to analyze the resources that are usually used and ask ourselves how we could change the process. These resources, what resources could be exude exclude or replaced that to increase the efficiency of the passage at the point of the channel. I would like to note that the less we perform action with the flow, the greater the likelihood that the likelihood that the flow will have less losses. An action with the fright in the warehouse lead to additional mistakes and physical losses. Optimal to receive the goods at the entrance to the warehouse and to ship it without handling. However, unfortunately, the task of distributive warehouse logistics are absolutely the opposite. Goods should be handled or and uh, stored on a warehouse. Management uh, should correctly manage the freight flow in the warehouse in order to minimize uh, actions. When we use a multimodal logistics, we only a change of transport, but not a container with the goods. Actions with the goods itself are usually not carried out. This is to do to increase the speed of the flow and not increase the losses of goods. Thus, we come into the trails uh, and uh, one of the basic principles of the optimal flow in the system, the principle of uh, evenly of flow. In the optimal system, the number of elements in the flow at different points at in time scales constantly and resources are evenly loaded uh, with the volume of the flow. This principle is final for the second section, but uh, it is the main link with the third section. Described as the principle of evenly flow, we begin to build the basis uh, for understanding the three following principles. The principle of uh, timeline, timelines, uh, reserve and uh, utilization of the resource. The principles of constructing the optimal channel. Consumer demand is not linear. It uh, depends on many factors. Economic, competitive, competitive, commodity, seasonal, weather and other. Each factor can make a significant change in uh, purchasing power which affects the amount of goods uh, sold uh, at a particular point in time. Accordingly, sales of goods are not constant and do not have regular liner linearity. Covering the variety of sales uh, and the resumption of stock can be carried out in two ways. Increasing the stock in the points of consumption, store or distribution center or manufacturer, or increase it, uh, or frequency delivery of goods to the points. It is possible to use a combined method for different parts of the supply chain. The more evenly of the demand, the uh, easier to manage uh, the resources in the channel. 
And when there was a flow, I was maximizing resource uh, utilization and minimizing uh, reserves of resources in the channel to cover variety, as well as uh, minimizing the availability of insurance stock in the points of the stock in channel. Here we are faced uh, with uh, a three principle of resource management in the channel. The third principle, the principle of timelines, uh, tell us uh, that uh, resources in the system should be prepared in a timely manner. By the time uh, they are used, take into account uh, unevenly of volume of the flow. Preparation of resources should be both in quantity and quality. There are usually two main types of demand, trend and cyclical. If the flow is constantly growing, trend, then the resources for processing this flow should appear in a timely manner at the required places, uh, place and at the required time, with a small surprise for the viability of the flow. This is necessary to effectively use the investment and operating cost spent on uh, maintaining and excessive resources in the channel. For example, if there is a need for a storage area of 2000 meters square or high altitude storage, but we use 10,000 meters square, then we will lead to additional cost. Sometimes companies will to go for such cost, but there are various factors, including the dynamics of development of companies or availability of resources in local region. The situation is worse with uh, the ensure of resources when we have a flow with cyclical demand. demand. In the case, uh, resources are needed for a certain time, but in the period of the flow degrees, their resources might not be used, which will lead to their inefficient use. This is evidenced by the last two principles of resource management in the channel the principal reserve and the principal utilization. The principle of reserve tells us, in the case of the strong volatility of the volume of the flow or a shortage of resources in the system, there should be an opportunity to use, resource, to use reserve resources if this is a vital necessity. The cost of the reserve resources should not be higher than the possible losses associated with a shortage of resources, unless otherwise specified. The next principle is the principle of utilization. The optimal system should be used on resources with optimal utilization. When we talk about the optimal use, we talk about the resources which use with the maximum possible utilization for those situations. On the one hand, resources should be fully utilized. On the other hand, you could not have too much of free resources in the channel for covering of volatility of the demand. If the vol volatility if the flow is not high, you could use your own resource. But if the vol volatility of the flows, flow is great, it is better to use the attract attracted resources for outsourcing. There is another way to efficiently use your own resources. In the period of the decline in demand, you can to give you of own resources into outsourcing or rent it out. But everything will depend, depend on each individual situation. This is a management decision. The main thing, the main thing is that uh, such decisions should be uh, economically justified and considered in different time. The primary tool for understanding the amount of resources uh, is to forecast in the future flow. Forecasting the volume of the flow in the future periods is uh, an important part of the process of calculating resources. Forecasting and calculation of the amount of resources should be made for the, for the different periods, but uh, for different resources there may be different time points uh, of forecasting. This affects by the time of production and uh, supply of resources. For example, the forecast and the calculation in the need for warehouse facilities will differ significantly from the calculation of the need for warehouse equipment. The period of construction or lease of uh, a free warehouse facility can uh, go beyond, beyond the short-term planning and has not only the medium-term but also the long-term planning, more than 2-3 years. 
but it should be noted the planning and forecasting are already tools for managing the logistic system. As it was uh, said at the beginning, the system is based on the principles of construction uh, and uh, besides uh, this, uh, there are a logistic system management tools that maintain the logistic system according to the rules. In detail, we will consider these management tools next time, but note uh, that they are meant for a planning and a foca uh, forecasting, a resource uh, management, a regular regulation management, and uh, a control. All of them are synchronized with the principles and uh, directed for correct management of the logistic system. Thank you very much, my friends. Uh, next time, I will see.